Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Mohi Eid. Uh, I'm a full stack developer here at BlackRock. Uh, I've been with BlackRock since 2011. And I'll share my story same like Grace. Uh, I have an archaeology uh, degree, so, uh, but I have some certifications here and there in uh, .NET development and uh, web applications. Uh, I'll share a little story with you today. Who, who have spinners at home or at work? Can you raise your hand? <laughs> So I, my kid used to have a spinner and they really like it. So, and she have an Elsa because she loves Elsa and they, uh, she's four years old. I decided to buy myself a spinner over here. And then once I, uh, I bought it, she saw it and said like, dad, this is for me. I said like, no, this is for me. And she said, no, no. And then, then she built a case and said like, see like this is a smaller in my hand because hers is a little bit bigger. And she said, I can fit this in my, in my hand. So whatever, this is not related to ours. I can run this over here and we can keep it running. And then uh, we will say like, once this stops, our demo will end. <laughs> well, like can't, it can't really, uh, it's a joke, it can't really go that long because it can only go for like a few minutes maybe. So our uh, presentation today is about configurable data visualization using Angular and using height charts. You can find me on LinkedIn or GitHub uh, uh, under Mohi8. So my problem started over here when uh, our users started to complain about uh, this grid over here. They said like the data is getting really big and it's hard to analyze. It's hard to take an action uh, based on this, uh, this data or this grid. So the solution for sure for me was like, okay, what about visualizing your data? And that was a clear answer for them, right? And they agreed. Then I started to think about 2008 when I was doing development and I was doing ESB.NET reporting portal. And I thought like, oh, I, some, some queries I can just visualize my data. This is very easy for me. But you can see this photo was taken yesterday from the ESB.NET website. They don't have good cameras, a lot of pixels over there. So this is very old technology and we are in 2017. So we should find another solution, which is absolutely high charts. Once I started looking into high charts, I hear like we have some other teams here in BlackRock who are using high charts. So I said like, well, I'll, I'll use them to teach me a little bit uh, uh, about high charts. And then I started to face some uh, issues over here. The first requirement that came in was like, we have this grid data, just to use it as is and display as high charts. And I was like, what? Like data for grids is totally different than uh, high charts series are totally different. What's going on in here? And then the next requirement that came in was like the user need an ability to be able to switch between a high chart and uh, a grid. And then I was like, oh, I got it. This this makes sense. Why do I make two different calls to get the same data and then display it in a high chart or display it in uh, a, a grid? So the solution was like, absolutely. What about aggregating this data in the front end, applying filters, uh, client side filtering, and make this completely configurable in a JSON file? And you can think about your JSON file where do you save it? You can save it in a file or you can save it in the cloud anywhere. Uh, and then think about reusability uh, where you can use your widgets going forward. So let's jump in a, in a demo. Who likes coding? Raise your hand. So we're not, we're not doing much of coding here today. <laughs> <laughs> we will write configurations. We will write JSON, right? This is all what it's about. So I'll start with writing my first demo over here. And what it needs from me, it needs an ID, right? So I'll provide an ID. And then, okay, no, no, no. oh, yeah. sure. Uh, OK, I'll, I'll duplicate the screen for a while. There. Because like you will not get a very good uh, resolution over here, but we'll try to make it better. OK. Uh, type, uh, we will say like we want to build a column chart. And then uh, the next is like uh, title, first demo. And then by, uh, what do you want to aggregate this data by? I want to aggregate it by uh, continent. So we have user data that have some continent information into it. And then what kind of reducer do you apply? Do you want to apply account, average, or sum? I'll say account. And then I will save this. Now I'll jump into my TS file. And what I'm going to do like this, dot config, initialize my configuration. 
and then I will import my widget configuration that I just write dot add widget. Then I'll jump into my HTML over here, and I will add my workspace component, and it takes an attribute called config, and we just pass our config to it. Let's look at this and see how this is working. So we got this uh, very nicely out over here. Uh, let's say here's my first. Uh, demo for you. No data is there, so the next step is is what it's waiting for the data to come in, right? So I'm going to come over here and have this little service to get some data. Data service dot create data row, and I want to create a, a thousand record maybe. Dot subscribe, and then data. It's the config, and then now I, w I want to tell it uh, this data is going to my ID, the, my config ID. Remember, we provided an ID, so I'm telling it go to demo, and then we'll provide the data property over here. And we have some uh, TypeScript issues over here. Let's close this. Demo. This the config. Dot data. Dot next. That should be it. Because like the data is an observable where we can send uh, data to it. Now we get this nice chart over here. Something's going on. We probably did not uh, spell continent right. Let's make a, a continent. And here you go. So this is our first demo. We just some configuration, some JSON configuration. We were able to build uh, our first uh, chart over here. Let's make let's make it a little better. So what do you see here? Like what kind of uh, of sorting do we have? It's probably alphabetically not true. Is it by value? That's not true. It's high charts sorting. High charts takes whatever series you provide to it and just run that it doesn't care about sorting over here. So how do we do some sorting over here? With using our configuration over here, I'll say we sort. What do you want to sort by? I want to sort it alphabetically. And now let's look at our, our chart. And we get a nicely alphabetically to, uh, sorted thing. We can change it to value. So sort by value. And I can say direction descendant. And this will sort it by value. Now, I want to change this continent to be by name. So I, I want to aggregate this data by name. And we'll see what else, what's going to happen here. And some processing is happening. Let's make this 100 column. I don't think this should take that time. OK. <laughs> OK, here you go. So you get uh, uh, paging by default. You get 10, uh, 10 uh, columns uh, per page. And now let's go to the next page. Not something wrong happened here. No data. Let's minimize this. And actually, probably there is no, no data over here. So. Does anybody want to look at 84 series over here? Not true, right? So what we can do, we can tell it, our users want to focus into our top 20. And our top is by value over here. So now you will look into here, and it will only bring the top 20 values uh, for you. <coughs> now. Let's do something fun here. We want to stack this <coughs> by gender. <coughs> I 
and you'll see like it's been stacked by female male over here but look at the coloring here we have females green and males is black is that true maybe not so what I'm gonna do I'm going I have a provider here and this provider can take a color provider for my, for my chart and now I give a male as blue and female as pink over here now let's jump into uh, my next demo over here and what's happening here I'm using the same data that you just saw and they have built out like six different charts out of it so we have data by continent data by country data by skills or by whatever and we have bar, bar chart uh, pie chart and column chart different sorting and all this stuff this is cool right like let's I have a little problem here that I want to show you so look at the buy skills widget over here and you see like this guy is angular gs comma database look at more database comma c sharp comma angular GS. this is not right so what's happening here this data is this is specific record is coming that uh, and the response as a comma delimited thing so how to treat this the framework provide you with something in the providers as well it's called expendables So what I'm gonna tell you is when you, when I'm aggregating by a skill by skills, please aggregate it by comma uh, or expand it by comma. So this is my separator. You can make your own separator over here. And now let's see. Okay. Is it really skills? Oh, we're looking at the wrong uh, thing here. I have to go back here. And comma. This is my uh, by skills JSON. And skills. And then comma. And error. Absolutely. So I can take this out over here. And I throw it outside here. And this is the beauty of uh, TypeScript for sure. Help you out with your issues. <coughs> so now uh, it has been divided uh, out. And you can see uh, here is the set of databases. Here is AngularJS, here is C Sharp, here is Java. And here's Angular. Uh, now, what if we want to search into this whole six widgets? What if we want to uh, like have two searches and we want to search through all of them and they will filter out? So this is very easy. We can do that by uh, coming over here like uh, for each widget. And what we're going to do, we are go inside the providers as well. I can have a D lookup. It's called a lookup uh, filter. And this is like, I tell it, hey, hey, like this specific widget have an index called name and it depends the value called name. And we have another index called country and depends on a value that's called country. What is this doing? This is actually taking the data in this widget and collecting a unique distinct list and posting this up using messaging services that we have using observable posting this up to the parent, uh, the workspace parent component. And the workspace parent component will collect all this data from all the different widgets that it have. And then it will build indexes that will be ready for you to search. And once you search, the workspace com parent component will send a message back to all the widgets, it, widgets that's interested in this index and will filter it down. This means that if, for example, I removed uh, the country, this specific widget will not be filtered by country. So now let's make this happen by going into the, this uh, uh, home component where we have this. And we will just say, this is the parent component that we have. And we say, hey, please, uh, you, this config, you have search indexes. This is the parent. And we tell it, you have a name. And the value is name, country, the value is country. It's probably you have to actually do it like this. Oh, uh, we use the value for display, so it doesn't really matter. So let's see uh, what this is going to do here for us. 
and we get this nicely painted uh, uh, filter by name or filter by country. Now, once this has uh, a load, I can search for a country, Egypt, this is where I'm from, and this will filter down, uh, uh, see we did not do this right, but w the country was filtered down, this data skills was filtered down, and uh, all of them, here's like by continent, this is Africa. Uh, for this specific one, we can look at the config and see maybe we did not pass the right values. Oh, we did not even save. Okay. Now, if I filter this, so now this is e this is responsive, and this is uh, this is explains how a widget can be responsive to a specific index, but not responsive to another index. And you have the ability to decide the, uh, for each widget uh, uh, your indexes. Now I'm going to jump into my last demo over here, and then we will jump into code and see how did we do that. So this is a full featured widget. Think about this: we have six widgets that was using the same data. Uh, why, sometimes like we might have some di uh, different data points that's coming in and then our widget store will just keep growing and growing and growing and we might end up with tens or hundreds of widgets in the page. If it's the same data set, why not combine all of this into one uh, widget and then we will have these uh, buttons that will control the aggregations and the filters into the widget. So we will say like uh, the user will have full control over it to say like, yes, I want to filter by country, no, I want to filter by skills or filter by language. They can apply uh, filters over here. This week, maybe this is where they can drive an action. Nobody logged in in our system this week, so we have to take an action here and see the, why this is happening. Uh, see, the, who, this is the people who logged in this month, and this is the people who logged in uh, this 900 days. Uh, we have uh, uh, customized tooltip, so if I'm, if I'm looking by language, I will see what kind of skills this language have. If I'm looking by continent, what, kind, what are the countries? And, vice, uh, and going forward. You can do drilling as well. So if I'm in the continent, I can drill into a country. And from a country, I can drill into hey, my tooltip. Please stop doing that. Uh, if I'm in country, I can drill into uh, 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 skills. And f like you can keep drilling, and you can build your drilling in your configuration file. Uh, as many levels as you want. And you can even take an action based on a drilling. So for example, like if we keep drilling in and then we drill into names, then probably it would be time to open uh, a grid of names or open a specific name if it's only one name. And uh, you can do this by listening to a specific message through observables. Uh, can drill up. Yeah, uh, this is very much what the framework is doing. And uh, we will take a look here back to our uh, presentation and see what's going on with that. So workspace demo, is that good? Probably, yeah. So uh, it's highly configurable and reusable. Uh, you, for me, like it, uh, it's very important that uh, our developers not, uh, don't have to write too much code uh, to reuse this stuff. All what they have to do is just provide a de description for your JSON and think about it. Uh, you have a JSON and you know where is your data coming from. You can build a whole widget out of this. It's cl we're having in client side aggregation, sorting, top end or paging. Provides consistency for coloring, so you can define coloring schemas for all these different widgets through your configuration. Uh, summary and layout, I know, probably did not notice the header have summary for how, how many records do we have, what's filtered out, what's not filtered out. Uh, advanced features like custom tooltips drilling down. Uh, common components, we, sort of like, we provide charts and grids, lists and calendars. And even, it, even when you uh, initialize your module into your application, you will be able to say it call a function called with components. So this will give you the ability to even inject more components from your perspective that this does not provide, provide you. Like let's say you want to build a, a name details component, you can still inject that component and load it through your configuration into the framework. So let's look inside the code. First thing, we have a chart options, very clear. We always have like very common chart options that we uh, have to share between different uh, components. So I save this in a very uh, simple uh, TypeScript file 
what's the width of my charts are going to be, responsive design for my charts, what they will look like in a tablet, what they will look like in a mobile, and this is shared between different charts over here. Now, I have the filtering service over here. So what's the filtering service is all based on uh, an iFilter interface. Take a look at the iFilter interface, what it's doing. So, uh, pointer, nope. Oh, yeah. So uh, take a look here. We have the apply filter function. What's the apply filter function is taking? It's taking an item, which is a row, and it's taking a, a field, what kind of uh, column, what field you want to filter, and then it takes a value. Even this value is optional. So what can you do with a, 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 an item with a field over here, right? So let's look at the implementation of this interface to see how did we build this configurable uh, uh, framework. So we provide inline implementation. So this is the, the, uh, the filter service over here. It's uh, an injectable service. And then we in provide uh, inline implementation of these uh, services. Do you see like, and, and this is where the description of the filter will come in place. So th this is an example, last seven days, and the ID, uh, this is where we use the transformation between JSON uh, string to an actual function that can run into uh, uh, our framework. And then uh, this is the, the code that runs inside it to run this specific filter against the item and the field. Look at the equals, we provide three uh, uh, parameters over here. We have the item, we have the field, and we have a value to compare against uh, for our thing. Uh, reduce service, same, same pattern. We have an interface that will provide inline implementation for it. And then it have an ID to uh, describe what this reducer is gonna do. Is it a count, is it a sum, is it a, 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 a average? And then the reduce function, it all it cares about, it takes a list, and then what do you want to reduce? Which field do you want to reduce? Uh, TypeScript JSON mapping, uh, I have to say a thank you for Mark, uh, Mark Galli. Uh, I, this is his GitHub. Uh, he was my driver for this JSON transformation. I will explain a little bit about this. So uh, you all know that uh, today, if you're calling an HTTP request, you can pass a specific model in TypeScript and it will transform your JSON into this specific model. So this is happening. It's actually like it's not a real uh, 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 mapping that's happening over here. It's just a mapping property to property and that's it. So let's say your model have a function function, in our case was the reducers, uh, was the filtering, right? So let's say your model have a function that it needs to apply. If you call this function, it will say like, sorry, I don't know what function you're talking because you did not initialize this class. So this is, uh, I found this in, uh, in the web, uh, was written by this guy, and uh, uh, then it uses reflection over here to say, map, uh, here is my mapping mechanism, and it tells it this is the class that you need to create an instance for, and it creates the instance for you, and you will be able to call any function in this, uh, uh, in this thing. Uh, this is an example how this reflection is happening. So we provide annotation, probably you all are, uh, now know what's annotation by using TypeScript. If you're Java developers, you'll absolutely know what is that. So uh, this is the JSON, I tell it, this is the name of the field that you're going to fill out. For me, find it in the JSON by this name. And then this is the class name. And then it can pro you can uh, provide union types. Even it's very strong. You can provide type of any, you can provide union classes. So this is the, my filter can be a string. In our case, it's like the ID of uh, the function that we save in the JSON. Or you can even provide the I, the I filter if you don't save as JSON. You can just, uh, and you're just saving this in your code. So you can just provide the, I, the filter interface uh, directly. Uh, we have, uh, 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 this is the field example, it's a string uh, type, so there is no need for complex stuff in here. Now I'm going to move to the next uh, slide, which is the workspace architecture. So how did I put all this together? And we will look into some architecture over here. So uh, we are talking about uh, configuration files, JSON, and then workspace component, this is the parent component. The parent component will use some services in the middle and will provide my, my widgets over here and we'll build it out. Um, we're using Angular, we're using high charts, we're using TypeScript, Lodash, and Moment.js for, uh, 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 for our filtering uh, purposes and uh, aggregation purposes. So this is the workspace component. Workspace component is the parent component. It, it provides different 
type of widgets that we have. We have a chart, we have a calendar, we have a, a grid, we have a list. So how do we make all these stuff work inside this uh, uh, workspace component? They all uh, implement, uh, in, uh, inherit an abstract uh, base widget over here. They have all the common functionalities that all of these might have. And it only needs to implement one function, which is called set view. And you're going to provide the right uh, data uh, setup. If it's a high chart series, or if it's rows for a grid, or if it's something for a calendar, this is where you can render whatever you want uh, through the implementing the set view function in the abstract base class widget. Uh, we talked about configuration. I'll just highlight a few things over here. So we have uh, the type for sure. We have uh, filters. So those filters are the filters that apply up front. I don't know if you noticed that the last widget that I, noted, uh, that I demoed was YTD widget. It did not have a 100K column into it. So I can provide an upfront to tell it like, hey, apply this filter and this filter and this filter upfront to my data for this specific widget, but as we'll provide filter buttons for the users to interact with this, which was like this week or next month or whatever. We can provide an aggregation by, yeah, if it's a single widget, we can uh, say like uh, a string value, or we can provide aggregation buttons over here. We have the reducers in the stack by, uh, we have the providers that gives us uh, ability to do the lookup services to search, or the colors, uh, consistency stuff, or metadata for the tooltip to show and then our data is an observable, and the reason for this is that, uh, the reason why we make it an observable is that we, uh, our data may, might take like a minute to load or something like this. So we want to sh display the layout upfront for the user, so the user knows, oh, I'm gonna get a widget over here, it's about this and this and this and this, and there will be some buttons over here, so they will have an idea to know what kind of data will show up for them, and the, uh, rather than not showing anything uh, for, for this minute waiting uh, for, uh, data. Uh, going to the next uh, next slide, what services did we have? We have a filter service, we have a reduce service, we have a formatter service to format numbers and dates, we have uh, a map util service to do the mapping between JSON and the actual class or the actual model, and we have the messaging service that does messaging between parent to different child, from a child to child, or from child to the parent component. So what's next step? <laughs> next steps is to use in GRX. Uh, I have to uh, depend a lot now on um, uh, Oleg uh, Maniac and uh, on uh, Michael, learn from them about NGRX because my service is getting very complex right now. And I probably if I go in GRX, I, I will simplify a lot of stuff and I'll be able to manage my state uh, much better uh, than what I'm doing right now. Personalize widgets layout, so we'll uh, add ability to customize, resize, and remove. And the good news is, um, I was in the Angular Mix Meetup uh, uh, conference in uh, Orlando uh, last month, and they announced that they are working in the CDK uh, uh, thing, and they are they already working in some shared uh, components like m modules and uh, alerts and stuff like that. But they are working functionality to like uh, grid start stuff and customizing and resizing. So hopefully by this time, uh, time when the, this is implemented, I can just use it to add personalization into my widgets. Uh, enable widget to store, so what's, what's a widget? It's data and configuration. So why not create a widget builder where you tell it, here's my data, and please aggregate this by, and then the user will be able to create their widgets in the fly and save it uh, into the cloud and, and uh, share it even with their colleagues. Uh, uh, global uh, workspace actions, so you see the buttons uh, that they have. If these buttons match for different widgets, why not move them up into the parent component? And then this, the same like the search, how the search is controlling all the different widgets, these buttons, the aggregation buttons and the filter buttons as well will be in the con container and they will control the flow uh, down there. Add more common components. Uh, this case by case, uh, your business will uh, be responsible to do the, to find out. Now, uh, uh, this is my demo uh, for the configuration, but before, uh, before I end uh, tonight, uh, I would like to share uh, my, uh, uh, my proposal over here. <laughs> so this is, uh, I call this Angular Universe. It's not universal, it's universe. And um, uh, what is this about? 
uh, you have seen the demo that I have, and this demo uh, have a header over there. It has some navigations, and it might have more common functionalities there, like uh, tool tips, uh, 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 pop-ups, alerts, toast if, uh, if it's mobile or whatever, right? So my idea is, why not build this up front and enable Angular templating through configurations? And this is uh, this whole demo is built in the Angular universe. It's now an NPM. It's in uh, in Git. It's in very early proposal. So uh, uh, your support will be very much appreciated. It's an open source. So if uh, uh, I would love if someone UI UX uh, would help out with this. If you have Angular experience as well, it would be much appreciated as well to come and, uh, and help me out with this. So uh, this is the app uh, universe. Uh, it's the dinosaur over here that control that have all the common functionalities that any application will have. Why, if you want to build a new website, why do you have to create the navigation every time? Why do you need to build the header every time where you can just control all this through JSON? And all what you have to do to uh, build your application is just import your uh, module over here. I import the configuration file. It's config.json. And they tell it Angular Universe module from config. And then over here, this is only thing that my app component have. It's this tag. And the Angular, uh, the, the module will be able to pass this information to you. Uh, my library over here to build out your whole application uh, over there. Uh, uh, thank you. And do you find the, the, the GitHub for this uh, app universe over here? And we will publish the presentations as well. Um, uh, thank you. Any questions for me? So quick question about moving your, your widgets to NGRX. So you're dealing with lots of data. Yes. Um, so what would be your approach for managing those big data sets in the store? Like mm -hmm. you talked about having too much data in the store can actually like, cause performance problems. So you just store aggregates or? Uh, no, I, I, I see like the idea of uh, this is not to save aggregates uh, because uh, uh, this data, see, I can, uh, I, I can uh, aggregate this data by whatever. You don't know. You can aggregate them by different uh, ten, uh, ways. So you can't aggregate them up front. You have to have the data. And I'm not worried about this because this is working today, and they have the data in memory today. It's working. But the idea of using NGRX is actually to, uh, rather than what's happening is like I'm pushing this data every time to every different widget to, uh, so I'm kind of copying the data and this is the bigger problem, right? If I'm able to take all this data as once and apply it into a store and each widget will be able to apply uh, uh, actions and filtering into it, this will probably minimize uh, the size of the data uh, uh, over there. So I think the mocked approach actually, to have a data and to visualize the data for different slides but in the in the store there will still be a full copy of the data so every update to the store so i think it depends how you like to refresh it right, right? right? Okay. yeah yeah that, that, that's true and there like there's lots of things to learn about in grx still and i'm not say like if you're not maintaining the history of the data so you're not worrying about growing the data as much. But you still garbage collect that. And you still want to make sure you unsubscribe. Uh, there is an overhead in, uh, on, in using NGRX. So it's not for every use case. But I still believe that this is a good use case yeah. for NGRX to use because my module can grow. And then uh, if I started to move those buttons up in the component, but it's still some, some uh, see, like uh, users get crazy, uh, to be honest with you. And I, I, I would propose and say, like, say, I, I want to move these buttons over here. And say, like, no, no, but I still want them in the widget. I, can, I want to still be able. So how can you maintain all these views are working together, but in the same data? You got to have a, one state, one store that's manipulating your data and applying filters and aggregations on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what, what the component will get, it will get the aggregation, aggregated version of the data. But the data in the store will stay as is. The actions and the, we will have like a centralized place to play. Yeah. 
Any other questions? Okay. Cool. Thank you.